Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and we're excited to bring you the review of SBB Mobile Shell 3D for Android. Let's get to it. So this was previously known as SBB Mobile Shell 5.0 for Android. It's been in beta for about a year, available only to carriers and OEMs. We did a preview of it a few weeks ago, but this is the final version, and they're calling it SBB Mobile Shell 3D for Android, and it is awesome. It's going to be available soon. Uh, by the time this video is available, we'll have a better idea on pricing, so we'll put an annotation up on the video so you know where to get it and for how much. What we're talking about here is a complete interface replacement for Android uh, that rivals and competes with ADW Launcher and Launcher Pro. It's comprehensive, it covers a lot of parts uh, of the home screen experience, and it's really well done and well thought out after a year of beta testing. So let's talk about what we have here. On its most basic level, they are home screens, eight of them, although you can change that number, that do certain functions, and then it does a lot more than that, so that's kind of a, uh, a minimal way of talking about it. Starting off here, this is the clock pre-configured panel. And from here we can see the time, we can see the next lunar day, uh, we can tap to see the lunar calendar. We can also change the skin of this particular panel. So we've got a wide variety of clocks. This blue clock is pretty cool. And if we tap on it, it will download it and bring it to the home screen. And there you go, a blue clock. Sliding to the right, this is a miscellaneous panel. We're not going to talk about this right now. It's kind of a panel where you can put widgets and program shortcuts and really anything you want. To the right, we have another miscellaneous panel, but there's something cool here I want to show you. As you can see here, I've got some program shortcuts, world time, and this is a picture widget. And if you tap on the item on the left, which has this 3D look, we get this really cool 3D album where you can flick through your pictures in sort of a beautiful, almost touch flow 3D-like way. And if you tap on the image, you can bring it up full screen there. So kind of a cool way to show off your pictures. Swiping to the right, this is another built-in pre-configured panel. It's just the calendar panel. And what you have here are your next appointments. You can add a new appointment there. You can flick through your calendar to see the different dates. And tapping on the calendar will bring up the Android calendar. Swiping to the right, this is another pre-configured panel that we're talking about. This is the Flickr panel. Really cool way to actually change your wallpaper. So let's say you tap on one of these. This picture looks cool. I want to make that my wallpaper. You tap on it and boom, within seconds, you've got fresh wallpaper. Pretty nice. And we've got a few settings we can change here. We can have the pictures update automatically. Uh, we can turn off the picture updates if it is not over Wi-Fi. Swiping to the right, this is another miscellaneous um, panel. And from here, we can actually tap on this little picture here and get another one of these crazy 3D views. This is of just your text messages. This may not have that much utility, to be honest. It looks really cool, uh, but are you actually ever going to go into this view and flick through your text messages? Who knows? Let's go to the right. Uh, this is another miscellaneous panel, and there's actually one missing that I want to show you, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, to manage all of your panels, what you do is you go into this view first, and this is that 3D view we started the video off with. And this is another example of somewhere that the 3D effect is awesome and it looks beautiful, but it really has no utility. Why would you ever want to stay on your 3D carousel here and see these animations unless you're showing the effect to your friends? So anyway, we can tilt around, we can spin it at a million miles an hour and get it to go very, very fast, sort of pointless. Down here we can manage our panels, which is very useful. So here's the weather panel that I left out that I want to show you. From here we can kind of move around, we can add new panels, take certain ones away, uh, and we can also set the color of certain panels and select your default. So let's say I want the weather panel to be the default, I tap on it, I click set as home. I can also change the background color of the weather panel. So let's make it red, you'll see that it turns red so that when I go back to this view, you get that red color. Okay, so let's go to the weather panel. This is one of those pre-configured panels. It's the last one I wanted to show you. It's the weather panel. Now, if you've got clouds or rain or something, you'll see a really cool animation, but when it's sunny, you don't see anything like that. And we can go through our forecast and move along like so. Another piece of functionality here, uh, if you take this little 3D button down there and slide it to the right or left, it will automatically jump into this crazy 3D spinny view. So just something to note. Also down here is a dock. A dock is very important so that no matter what home screen you're on, you always have the programs that you use the most. By default, SPB Mobile Shell will populate the dock 
with phone, text messaging, web, which I changed, and the program doc. The program doc, or the program tray, is very simple, just as a listing of programs. Um, to change any of these, it's very easy. You tap and hold. You get a little chooser here. Let's say I want to have calendar be in the dock, and boom, the icon is replaced. You've got calendar. Very easy to do there. Now let's talk about some of the kind of widget functionality. There's something called edit mode. And if you tap and hold on a particular widget, you'll get a green arrow on anything that can be changed or configured. So here we've got a green arrow. If I tap on that, it will change the look and the feel of that particular widget. Let's try to find some more green arrows here should be able to find a couple, like for example here, calendar. So if I tap on the green arrow, it will expand to show me um, more information or it will collapse just to be an icon on the screen. And a lot of other widgets will have this functionality. So if we tap and hold, here's the menu that we get. And from here we can add more widgets. We can add a program link just as simple as that. Or we can add an SPB widget, and a lot of these have different uh, looks and feels to them. So if we go to favorites, here's a good example of a configurable, changeable widget. We get a green arrow. We can tap to show my four favorite people or my eight favorite people. If there was enough room on this home screen, I could actually see 12. So if I remove flashlight and do this, four, eight, well, maybe not, maybe there's only eight inside of there. Another cool thing about Mobile Shell and what they do, and I actually need to put a program or two on the screen here to show you that, is that you get a little tray in the bottom that you can use to help organize your home screens. So have you ever had a situation where you have a home screen full of icons and the only way to switch the order of two icons is to delete one, move the other one, and then add the other one back. Well, with Mobile Shell, you don't have that problem because you have this little waiting area, this little dock on the bottom that you can drag programs or folders to, and you could sort of keep them for later uh, whenever you're done organizing your home screens. So let's take a look at the other Mobile Shell widgets that you could add. They're kind of basic, to be honest. Uh, we've got the weather one, which lets you switch between a wide variety of weather styles. So if we just, there's probably about five of them. So it really lets you change that. And here's another cool feature. If you tap on this little grid, you get this 3D view. Once again, another example of where uh, the 3D effect is really awesome, but the utility is kind of low. Why would you want to ever look at your weather like this? I mean, it's backwards. And obviously, you're supposed to look at it more like this. But the fact that it can rotate to a point that you can't even read what is going on in the particular widget is just kind of a little bit silly. It's a little bit fancy, and it's, it's very clear that SPB was trying to wow people with this, and they did, uh, but they've kind of forgotten the utility in some of these areas. So that's a pretty cool widget. Let's delete that off the screen and see what other widgets we can show you that come from SPB. Birthdays is pretty interesting. Um, we've got messaging, calendar, all of these system indicators, really. You even get your own SPB um, battery widget with percentages, which is always good, or you can add your own Android widgets. Let's say you've downloaded Android widgets from the marketplace. For example, I've downloaded a uh, quick battery. You can use your good old Android widgets. You don't need to use the ones that SPB have specified for you. So if you're somebody that really likes eye candy, you're going to love SPB Mobile Shell. If you're somebody that likes things lean and clean without all of the visual fanfare and with lots of utility, you might want to stick with Launcher Pro or ADW Launcher. It's really up to you. Really quick, let's see how much program memory uh, we're using right now on SPB Mobile Shell 3D. So we'll go into the settings, wherever that might be. There it is. And we're going to go to Applications. And here we are, SPB Mobile Shell using about 10 megabytes of of RAM. That's actually not that bad. Uh, Launcher Pro and ADW Launcher come a pretty close to that. Um, so it's not it's not going to sap that much performance from your device. SPB has done a good job with mem memory management, so you can keep that in mind. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.